ZR2 SoCal. So this is the start of the trail um, for Joshua Tree, the drive through that we did on uh, May uh, 25th. This is Joe's rig. He's uh, wrapped it in gunmetal gray. He's got some nice CBI bumpers front and rear, and he's just about to put a CBI rack on the back, and he just actually posted that he wants to get rid of his tunnel cover. So that's that. And then that truck is, I believe, Jody's. And then this one is Brandon's right here. And then the white one in front is my truck so we're all just waiting here there was somebody else that was gonna attend with us but they ended up not showing up and that's my dog he's the co-pilot so <clears throat> we left the chevron and we drove down the uh, road to Burdu canyon and basically there's a bunch of people here you'll see them on the side of the road they're uh, out shooting and having a good time lots of uh, fun going on apparently and this is all before the Joshua Tree border, so it's all BLM area, so it's uh, free for all basically, as long as you're not breaking the law or anything. And <clears throat> then we get into the, the Joshua Tree National Park, and you'll see there's a there's an actual gate that goes in between two uh, uh, like two boulders basically, and then after, after that is the Joshua Tree. Uh, that's coming up here in just a little bit, but before we get to that, there's a um, actual uh, kind of small little obstacle here. As you can see, it's kind of like this basically kind of a technical ascent and descent. Kind of off camber a little bit. Nothing crazy. And that's basically like the first obstacle that you're going to find on Burdue Canyon. And there's just uh, the whole thing afterwards is yeah, not nice much area up here, obstacles uh, other than some uh, too, rocks looks like that you have to navigate around uh, throughout the canyon. Copy that, heading up. Yeah, the exit over here is really fun. You're gonna love it. So we're continuing on after that little obstacle that we just finished. And we're going through the, the wash here. Part of Burdu Canyon still, BLM area. And we're gonna eventually get into Joshua Tree. You'll know when you see it. <clears throat> it's kinda hard to miss. It's a nice big old gate. It's kind of impossible to get around. And then you'll start noticing the actual Joshua Tree National Park signage that basically says, uh, don't drive anywhere except on the actual road here. And that's true of any kind of national park that you'll experience where they actually allow you uh, to drive off the, the, the dirt roads, or I'm sorry, the street. And once you drive off the paved roads, they obviously want you to maintain uh, any uh, physical roads that have been already recreated, they don't want you to be blazing trails in a national park. So that's one of the reasons why they do that. So they very clearly mark everything out for you, so you can be uh, cognizant of what's supposed to be uh, a trail and what isn't. Because sometimes you you know you get down an offshoot and you don't know which way is which. So, anyways, um, we're going to come up on 
our second optical here. And this is uh, basically just some rocks that are very tight. And uh, basically you just have to go slow. And try and not hit your wheels because there's these two rocks that you have to wedge your vehicle in between while navigating a rock that's uh, in front of those two rocks uh, where you don't want to be dragging your differential or your shock mounts on. So you want to just be very careful to avoid uh, all that while uh, getting yourself oriented properly to get through those two semi-gatekeeper-like uh, outcroppings. And then once you get through, you're pretty much uh, drive straight. And if you get if you get stuck, always get out of your vehicle and double check before you know, proceeding, or ask somebody to spot you while you're doing the traversal. Well, that's basically uh, the other really big obstacle that we ran across. There was a couple other parts in the um, trip where we ran into rocks, like right here. You know, nothing, nothing crazy. I wouldn't even call this rock crawling. It's just basically going slow to try and avoid damaging your vehicle. Um, and as long as you air down to about 20 to 25 psi on this on this road, you'll be fine. There's no deep sand. The only thing you're airing down for is to make your trip smoother and to try and avoid, uh, you know, puncturing a tire because it's overinflated and it hits a rock at a at an overinflated rate and then punctures itself. So usually when you have a tire slightly deflated, it, it will wrap around uh, a rock. Now, of course, there's no 100% guarantee on anything. It's just, you know, that's the idea is try to minimize your risk while you're out on these trails. So <clears throat> after this, it opens up into the Joshua trees. You start seeing the Joshua trees. And then from there, we have to turn left onto a one-way road. There's some oncoming traffic, and so yeah, so there's some Joshua trees, and we're we're able to go really fast on this section. This section was really fun. There's a lot of uh, S curves and other things like that. We're able to go pretty fast. I would say up to 40 miles an hour at some points, as long as you can see far enough ahead where you, you know the the road was clear, because uh, you don't want to run into people like that. So. You know, just make sure if you go through this and you're, you're trying to go through at a high rate of speed, just make sure you're only doing that when you can see clearly uh, in front of you. And practice uh, stopping ahead of time so that you know uh, how, how your truck responds in, in the environment. And uh, so that, you know, when, when and if you do come upon somebody, you can stop in time to avoid hitting them. And always remember the best idea, and that was the left turn on to Geology Road. Um, just remember to uh, head your vehicle towards the dirt instead of the other car if you do happen to run into somebody and it's an emergency. Uh, it's best to just go off the road versus running head on into somebody. Uh, you will do damage, but it'll be a lot less uh, and you won't be damaging the other person's vehicle who wasn't traveling at a high rate of speed. So that's just my recommendation. Of course, everybody has their own opinions on how to run off-roading and so after this geology road uh, circles around it heads to the main road and this main road then heads to uh, the, the actual paved road that goes through Joshua Tree and you'll see the that you're going by a bunch of the, the beautiful rock outcroppings that are in Joshua Tree and if feel free to stop at any of these uh, and the cool thing about this this run is we didn't have to pay to get in or leave the park because when we enter through Burdu and we exit through uh, the the old Dale Mine Roads, uh, there's no need to pay an entry and exit fee. So just keep that in mind if you want to visit Joshua Tree and you're not looking to blow a lot of money on entry fees or if you don't have a, an annual pass for the National Park, something to consider. So after that, we stopped uh, at that toilet and took a break and then went on the dirt roads. Now, this is Old Dale Road, so we're now actually heading up into the mining area and we're going about 40, 40 to 50 miles an hour on some of these parts where it's nice and straight. Uh, so I just sped this thing up really, really high because there's not much to see here. 
Um, the point of this isn't to capture the, the road, it's just to kind of give you an idea. If we ran into an obstacle, I would have slowed down the video so that you can take a look at it, but really this is just a really fun area to go fast and hard and, and really enjoy those DSSV shocks that are on your ZR2 truck. Um, for lesser vehicles with uh, with other shock systems, you know, it, it can also be a, an advantage to test out your equipment there and then compare notes and stuff like that. So, fun times. You can do lots of things out here and really uh, test out your vehicles. Now, we just turned off of the road, off of Old Dale, and we went to the Brooklyn Mine Road. This is the Brooklyn Mine Jeep Trail Road, which heads off of Old Dale and it heads up into the Brooklyn mine and there's a bunch of mines up in here and I would recommend that you do your research <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of a lot of people out here so it's pretty popular and the one thing I would be making sure that your your vehicle is a four-wheel drive because you'll see in a little bit that we run into somebody that was not prepared and we ended up having to help them get them out of the out of a sticky situation it was definitely not something that they really wanted so this Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn mine Jeep, Jeep trail was exceptionally rocky and so we we really had to slow down here uh, just to be careful because uh, you can pop tires on these hard rocks these are very very sharp out there so just be careful maintain speed uh, slow down um, and from there, we ran into some hill, hilly sections, so we decided to go and, and explore. And right up the top of this first hill here, we went left. But if you were to go right, there's a open mine down at the bottom that you could go explore. Now, I we didn't go down there and explore, so we don't know if that hole is blocked off with metal, which usually all the mines in these areas are. So if you were to turn right, Right after this uh, hill here, uh, there's a there's a road right there. We we turn left right here, but if you were to have gone right, there's a nice hole to go explore. So we recommend you go explore that if you're interested. This is a very steep downhill. We had to go pretty slow. The rocks were slippery, and we uh, we just kind of put it into low uh, first gear, uh, let the let transmission kind of carry you down. One of the cool things about these trucks is that if you uh, move it from drive into L and then adjust the uh, up or down on the side of the sh shifter, you can actually control your transmission for a very controlled descent without using brakes. So it's something that's a very neat technique if you can get used to. Um, highly suggest you practice it. From here, we went on further up into the wash and we passed that group there. They were having problems. They had cracked their differential, so they, they were having a hard time. But we had, we stopped and asked to make sure that they weren't, weren't having any problems, and they said, no, they were good, so we kept going. Uh, further up, so we stopped uh, at the crest of this, this hill, and we took some drone footage, and then after that, we went down and checked out a cabin, which was in the valley. Now, I did not record between the the, the peak of this summit here and going down into the valley, which is no big deal. It's, you know, basically the same kind of road. Just go slow, it's really rocky, and you'll have a good time. So we're about, I'm about to pull up here. This is a, kind of an obstacle where you get off camera, it's about 15 degrees. Uh, so just be careful going through that section. Uh, lots of good stuff. Now, up ahead, on there was the Brooklyn Mine, if you were to go straight, but we went ahead went to the right and down into the valley because we saw this neat um, cabin down here that was made out of rock and the people are left all kinds of crazy things in here. There's a bunch of beers uh, and all kinds of stuff. And you can come down here uh, and use this uh, cabin at your will. Just make sure you leave it as you found it or, or better, you know, leave, leave a beer, take a beer kind of thing, you know, those kind of things. So just keep in mind that you know there are probably rats and stuff like that, or mice uh, in the area. So if you, if you leave food out, then you're going to be visited. Um, it could be even snakes and other kinds of fun critters. So just be cognizant of that you know, if you decide to stay here. It's, it's a great little place. Um, and 
there's there's cabins like this in other national parks. Like there's a couple cabins in Death Valley that are very similar. And I look forward to doing that in November. Um, looking to get some people to go with us to the uh, geology cabin in Death Valley. There's also a uh, 49ers event going on in Death Valley uh, during the same time, which I'm thinking about going. So something to consider. So please. Uh, consider joining us on our Facebook group. I'll have the uh, link at the end of the video. Um, we can, uh, we'll, we'll be posting more event information on there. Um, and then, of course, we'll also release more videos onto this uh, YouTube channel as we can. So please consider subscribing if you can. We, we're not... Um, Check it out. We're not sponsored by anybody. This is all just done for the free thing, you know, free of it. So this is the two-wheel drive vehicle, which had no business being here. Kudos to them for making it out this far, but luckily I had seen them. Otherwise, they would have had a bad day. And this is Joe doing the recovery. I didn't film after he got hooked up because I didn't want to film anything in case of some sort of liability or other concerns. Anyways, we all make it out, and uh, this is the final shot. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. Everybody's good. This is ZR2 SoCal signing out.